Hi guys, for today's video, we will be going over my top five tips for creating a cottage core aesthetic house. So we'll be going to Harv's Island because as I take you through each of my tips, I'm going to be building a room from scratch at the same time to show you guys how I use these tips as a guide when I design with the cottage core aesthetic in mind. But before we jump into the tips, I think it's really helpful to just understand what the cottage core aesthetic is exactly. Cottage core is described as an aesthetic inspired by a romantic interpretation of rural life. So when I am designing a room with a cottage core aesthetic, I always try to keep things natural and cozy with a lot of delicate and whimsical details. When I think of cottage core, I think of flower fields, old cottages, ivy on the wall, lavender fields, stacks of books, flowy dresses, and a little bit of charming clutter. Cottage core can be hard because you want things to be vintage but not too antique, rustic but not overly farm or country core, whimsical and charming but not crossing over into fairy core. So I find that you can achieve a cottage core aesthetic best when you combine elements from each of those aesthetics and find a good balance between them. So now that we know more about the cottage core aesthetic, let's jump straight into the video with tip number one. Tip number one, pick a color palette with natural tones. When designing a room, it can be very helpful to decide what your color palette will be before you start decorating. Your color palette will change based on the room you're making, the theme you wanna go with, and the overall aesthetic that you are hoping to achieve. For the cottage core aesthetic, you want to stick to a color palette that is very natural, nothing too bold or too bright. Instead of really bright whites that have blue undertones, use warmer whites that have yellow undertones. Using more muted, neutral, and warm tones can help you to keep your color palette feeling natural and cozy as opposed to really modern or overly bold. You also want to make sure that the patterns you use aren't too busy or modern looking. They should have a vintage kind of feel, so plaids, check, polka dots, or florals are all really great options. You don't have to exclusively keep your palette to neutrals either. You can choose a fun color as your dominant or accent color and expand your basic neutral palette to complement the color that you want to use. So this is an example of building a palette that works with the cottage core aesthetic using an orangey red as the theme color. This color works really well with the cottage core aesthetic because it's very reminiscent of fall, which of course has lots of cozy and natural elements. Here's an example using a light purple or lilac as your theme color. This lilac or lavender color is another really great choice because it is reflective of the French country style of interior decorating and the French lavender farms and countryside. Blue is another great theme color to use. Vintage blues can vary from beautiful turquoise or teal to a soft baby blue or periwinkle. And one of my personal favorite color palettes to use for a cottage core aesthetic is one with lots of shades of green. Green is such a great color for cottage core because you can use light, happy greens for spring and summer or deeper forest greens for fall and winter. You can never go wrong with green because you find it everywhere in nature from trees and grass to flowers and plants. So today I've decided that I want to make a fun, happy kitchen and the color palette I have chosen is this yellow one. Since the first day of spring was just a few days ago and it's starting to get really warm outside, I thought yellow would be the perfect color for today's video and there are so many cute yellow items in the game to choose from. So once I have my color palette chosen and I know what type of room I'm making, I like to start by choosing a wallpaper and floor and I will even drop a few items that I know I really want to use for the room right in the middle here just to help me with choosing the wallpaper and floor. Sometimes by the time my room is finished, the dynamic of it will have changed so much so that I will end up changing my wallpaper or floor if I feel like a different one would complement the room better. So here's the wallpaper and floor that I decide to go with along with a few of those items that I know I want to use. And now we're ready for tip number two. Tip number two, use furniture made from natural materials. Choosing the right furniture will completely set the vibe of the room. So you want to make sure the furniture you end up using fits the aesthetic you want. For a cottage core room, you want furniture made from materials that would be found in nature. 
This helps to keep the rustic and vintage aspects of the cottagecore aesthetic. While you don't have to exclusively use items that are made from natural materials, you want to avoid anything that feels really modern or too brightly colored. Pieces from the antique set, log set, and wood set are really great options, or really any item of furniture that you think you would find in your grandparents' house. Don't forget to customize all your furniture and items that you have placed along the way to complement the color palette that you decided on. I'm really happy with my furniture choices and placements for now, although it might change a little bit over the next couple of steps. But for now, let's get into tip number three. Tip number three, create cozy spaces. Creating a cozy feel to the room you're decorating really adds to the entire cottage core aesthetic. So in addition to the main furniture in your room, having other small areas such as a reading nook or a writing corner can really create a cozy atmosphere. Since the cottagecore lifestyle is more natural and unplugged, there's a lot more focus on hobbies like crafting or cooking, so I like to add in as many of those little spots as I can. Within those spaces, adding in rugs, candles, cushions, and soft lighting will further enhance the cozy feels. A lot of times with cottagecore designs, you will find little nooks for reading, playing music, or a place to sit down for tea because the cottagecore lifestyle will really embrace the simple things in life. I don't like to use a lot of modern technology like large flat screen TVs or the full system kitchen in my cottagecore designs because I think they are just really out of place. 
Of course, you still want a place to cook or an entertainment area in a cottagecore house, but it is a much more simplistic, stripped down version of those things. So instead of a big stereo, you might have an old record player. Or instead of having your chairs pointed towards a TV, you might have them pointed towards each other to encourage the idea of disconnecting from the world and focusing on those who are right in front of you. Now you can see that the room is starting to feel a lot cozier and lived in rather than just another room. And you do really want the room to feel like a place that you would actually want to spend your time in. So now the room is really coming together and we're going to just continue straight on to tip number four. Tip number four, add in lots of small and whimsical details. Adding in a lot of small decorations will make the whole room feel more detailed, which really adds to the whimsical charm of the cottagecore aesthetic. String lights, garlands, small flowers, delicate teacups, hats, shoes, and other little charming pieces can all make a room feel really whimsical, just like the cottagecore lifestyle itself. Cottagecore can even be quite cluttered at times, so the more details the better. When you think there are just enough items placed around the room and on the walls, you want to try to add even more.
As I get further into the decorating process, I might shift or change a few aspects of the room here and there, but you can see how adding in these small decorations all around totally transformed the aesthetic of the room. Now we are in the home stretch and we will add in the final details with tip number five. Tip number five, decorate with lots of greenery and natural accents. My final tip is to add in lots of plants and greenery and any other natural decorations. Adding in plants and flowers can completely transform a room. Lots of greenery and natural elements are especially important for the cottage core aesthetic since it is so natural and rustic. Hanging wall plants, flowers, trees, planters, and wreaths are really great final touches to a cottage core style room. Depending on how the room has turned out, I might take out a few pieces of furniture or take away a few items here and there to swap them for more plants if I think they would look better than what was there before. Decorating with items like plants, flowers, and wreaths can really just elevate a room to the next level. You don't need to go over the top with the plants, but in my opinion, you can never have too many. But at the end of the day, how many plants you should add to the room will totally change based on the type of room you are building and how much space you actually have to fill. Some of the cottage core rooms I've built have been overflowing with plants, and some might just have a few smaller ones scattered throughout. But as long as you are decorating with these natural elements, your room will have a very cottage core aesthetic. So here is my completed yellow cottage core inspired kitchen. As we take a closer look of the finished room, we'll go through a checklist of each of my tips to see how each aspect helped to bring the room together. So you can see that I really embraced my yellow color palette throughout the entire room. From my wallpaper choice, to my kitchen items throughout, and my yellow floral pattern that I used for the placemats and the tablecloth. I used a few different colorations of the log and wood furniture to add to the rustic feel of the room. If you choose the white customization for a few of your wood pieces, you shouldn't feel like you have to customize every piece white. I think a lot of what adds to the cottage core aesthetic is actually having a variation in the type of woods that you are using for your furniture because it really adds to the whimsical clutter aspect of the cottage core aesthetic. Now here I have a couple different cozy spaces. I have a cozy little reading spot with a rocking chair right by the wood burning stove. I've got a stack of books ready to go right next to the chair and more wood nearby to throw onto the fire if you need to. I have a spot here for tea if you want to catch up with a friend or just listen to music while looking out the window. 
And finally, over here, I have a spot where you can just organize yourself and your thoughts. It's right by the phone so that you can take notes if you need to or write down any important information that you don't want to forget. I also have the key holder here so that the first thing that you do when you enter or leave the room is hang up your keys. I love adding in as many small details as I can. So as I'm decorating, I try to imagine what I would be doing in those areas and what items I can add in to enhance that idea. So over by the kitchen table, I thought maybe you would be sitting down with your mom or your friends chatting over tea and cakes while baking or putting together a fruit basket to take over to your neighbors. And I thought it would be cute to put a little book over on the bench because sometimes you're reading a book when someone or something interrupts you and you just put your book down wherever you are to go take care of that something. So when I decorate my rooms, I just really like the idea of having it look like someone was right in the middle of something and they could pick back up at any moment. I'm also obsessed with how you can actually turn on and interact with some of the items in Animal Crossing. So you can actually turn on the espresso machine here and the coffee will drip out. You can turn on the mixer, the stove, the sink, the standing mixer. And my personal favorite is the toaster because when you put it down, the toast will pop back up and it's the cutest thing on earth. And over here with my rocking chair area, my idea was that after a long day of gardening, you could come in, hang up your gardening hat, take off your gardening boots, and unwind by the fire. Finally, you can see that I added in the finishing touches to my walls. I have some decorations that look like they were made from natural materials like the wood cuckoo clock, the wooden welcome sign, the key rack, and the antique phone. I also have a couple of the embroideries that your in-game mom gifts to you because they are super cute and they definitely add to that cottage core charm. Over here I have the log clock that looks very handmade, these cute garlands over the windows that I feel look so quaint, and the little rooster tapestry over in the corner that I feel like only belongs in the kitchen. I also have some clay ivy planters, two of the paintings from your in-game mom, one of the little cottage in a flower field that I felt like was very appropriate for this video, and the other of some pretty roses, and of course I have a couple floral swags, the garden wagon, and a tree branch wreath. Definitely some of my favorite in-game items. I didn't end up adding in any trees or floor planters because I already had a lot going on in the room and I felt like the garden wagon accomplished a lot of the natural feel that I wanted in itself. And all in all, I really love the way that this room turned out and the happy yellow theme had me really excited for spring and Animal Crossing. I hope this video helps you when creating your own cottagecore aesthetic house and if you have any questions at all, I would love to answer them in the comments below. Also, if you end up using any of my tips or feel inspired by any of my videos, I would really love for you to tag me on Instagram so I can see what you guys created. So until next time, thanks so much for watching and happy building!